Hi there! This video is here to help you with constructing a line graph. A line graph displays continuous data like time or temperature, where the gaps between the data have a continuous value. This is an example of a line graph that shows the average temperature of a place over a year. You might notice that the months of the year are along the bottom and the temperature is up the side. We call these the axes of the line graph. The x-axis runs horizontally along the bottom and the y-axis runs vertically up the side. We are going to create a line graph to display the data in this table. It shows the distance a car travels over a six hour journey. If you want to, you can create the graph on squared paper at the same time as I do it on the screen. You can pause if you need more time for any of the steps. When we create our own line graph, we start by deciding how to label our axes. We will put the information in our first column, time, on the x-axis of the graph. Remember, this is the line that goes from left to right at the bottom of the graph. Our line will start at zero and end at six, so we need to decide how long it should be. If we use one square to represent one hour, our graph will be quite small. We have space here to use two squares to represent each hour, which will be 12 squares altogether. We draw the horizontal line with a ruler, leaving space underneath for our label. There is an arrow at the end of the line to show that although our data stops here, time is continuing. Now we can mark the scale of the axis. We need to make sure we are labelling the lines, not the spaces between the lines. We also need to make sure that the scale on our line is going up in equal steps. Our graph is going up in steps of 1, and 1 is represented by two squares. Finally, we label the axis. Now we can label the y-axis of our graph. Remember, this is a line that goes from the top to bottom at the side of the graph. This axis represents the distance the car travelled. We will need to start at 0 and go up to 500. If we use one square for each 100 kilometres, our graph will be too small. We could use one square to represent 50 kilometres. Just as we did before, we then need to mark the scale on the axis, making sure we keep the intervals, or gaps between the numbers, the same size. We are going up in steps of 50, so each two squares represent 100. Now we have created our axes, we can plot our data on the graph. This means we mark each piece of information in the correct place. At zero hours, the car had travelled zero kilometres. We will use a dot to mark the place on our graph where the vertical line representing zero hours crosses the horizontal line representing zero kilometres, like this. At one hour, the car had travelled 75 kilometres. There is no line to represent 75 kilometres, so we need to use the scale to work out where the point will go. 75 is halfway between 50 and 100, so we'll need to go halfway between the horizontal lines representing those numbers. You might find it useful to draw the 75 kilometre line onto the graph lightly with a pencil. Then you can mark the point where the two lines cross. We then continue to work through the table, plotting each point with a dot. Finally, we join up the points with straight lines. Now it's your turn. Here's a table containing data about the height of a sunflower over eight weeks. Pause here and have a go at constructing your own line graph to display this data. If you need to, you could go back and watch the earlier example again. Remember to decide on the axes first and then plot the points. How did you get on? Let's have a look at what the graph should have looked like. You may have chosen a slightly different scale for your graph, and this is fine as long as your scale goes up in equal steps. I hope this has helped you to understand how to construct a line graph. If you need more maths help, we have lots of these videos on the Twinkle website, so make sure to check them out. Thank you for watching! Hi there! This video is here to help you read and interpret information from a line graph. Let's start by looking at this line graph that shows the temperature over the course of a day in Cardiff in January and July. First of all, let's make sure we understand the line graph. 
If you need more help with this, you could watch our Constructing a Line Graph video on the Twinkle website. The horizontal axis, or x-axis, goes from left to right at the bottom of our graph. On this graph, it tells us the time that the temperature was taken. It is labelled in steps of 3 hours, starting at 3am and finishing at 9pm. The vertical axis, or y-axis, goes from top to bottom at the left of the graph. On this graph, it tells us the temperature that was recorded in degrees Celsius. It is labelled in steps of 5 degrees, starting at 0 degrees and finishing at 25 degrees. This line graph shows us two sets of data. The key on the right tells us that the blue line represents the temperature on the 1st of January and the red line represents the temperature on the 1st of July. If we want to find out the temperature on the 1st of January at 3pm, we need to find that time on the horizontal axis and then draw a vertical line from that point to the line representing January, in this case the blue line. Then we need to draw a horizontal line from here to the y-axis. We can use the grid lines on the graph to help us. The point where we meet the y-axis will give us the answer. We can see it was 10 degrees at 3pm on the 1st of January. What was the temperature at midday on the 1st of July? Pause here and see if you can work out the answer. Let's check your answer. The point where the line reaches the y-axis isn't labelled, but we can work out that each of the intervals has a value of 1 degree, so the answer is 23 degrees. We can also read data from the graph the other way around. On the 1st of July, at approximately what time did the temperature first reach 20 degrees? We can only find the approximate time and not the definite time because we don't know exactly what happened to the temperature between the points on the line. This time we need to start by drawing a horizontal line from the 20 degrees to the point where it reaches the red line. Then we draw a vertical line down the x-axis. The point where we meet the axis is about one third of the way between 9am and midday. So the temperature reached 20 degrees at approximately 10 a.m. Sometimes we might need to answer comparison questions about a line graph. For example, what was the difference between the temperature at 9 a.m. on the 1st of January and the temperature at 9 a.m. on the 1st of July? First of all, we can use the strategy we used before to work out each of the values. Pause here and have a go. Now check your answers. To find the difference, we need to subtract 8 from 18, giving us the answer of 10 degrees. How much did the temperature increase by between 3am and 3pm on the 1st of July? Remember, increase means go up. Pause here and answer the question. Let's check your answer. The temperature at 3 a.m. was 11 degrees and temperature at 3 p.m. was 22 degrees. Therefore, the temperature increased by 11 degrees. Sometimes we can answer questions about a graph just by looking at the shape the graph is creating. For example, between which times on the 1st of January did the temperature stay the same? We can look at the shape of the line to answer this question. The line does not go up or down between midday and 3pm, so this shows us that the temperature stayed the same. At what time on the 1st of January did the temperature start to decrease? Pause here and see if you can answer this question. We can look at the line and see that it starts to go down at 3pm. So our answer is 3pm. These line graphs have all the key information missing. Can you use the shapes of the graphs to match each one to its title? Let's check your answers. The distance the car travelled would have increased throughout the journey. So this was shown by the red graph. The water in the bath increased until it was full, stayed the same when it was being used, and then decreased again when the plug was pulled out. This is shown by the blue graph. The temperature of a cup of tea would decrease over time, so this is shown by the green graph. 
I hope this has helped you to understand how to read and interpret line graphs. We have lots more line graph videos on the Twinkle website, including how to construct a line graph. So if you need more maths help, make sure to check them out. Thank you for watching.